I, I will forever have to work on my confidence and my insecurities and my self-love and that's just going to be something daily that I choose to do. Welcome, Welcome to, to the new series, Cocktails and Conversation with Kat and Nat. And we've decided to bring you all of these conversations with people that we like to have where there's a little bit of wisdom, always hilarity and hilaria. Yes. Some famous, some just cool, some drink, some don't drink, but there's always a conversation. Cheers. Join us. Our audience has a high tolerance for our fuck ups. They know us. They they love the. Uh, that it brings it more like it's more real life. Yeah, from normally. until about a month ago, we recorded off our phone, off a free app, <laughs> every podcast we ever did. I love that. I yeah, love it. That's and we were um like you, but we didn't win. We were nominated for the podcast, and we were at the awards, and you looked so pretty, oh and you God. were. Your dress was so nice. And um, well, I got drunk and we had to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, actually. <laughs> oh, dear. But I didn't win either. I just got to present a award and then I didn't win either. Oh, yeah. You know, we never win. We go to awards. We used to go to awards all the time. We never win. All the time. No, not all the time. Like when? All right. So for those who don't know you uh, and who aren't aware of who you are, which I don't think that's possible, but um, how, do you, how do you explain yourself? How would you introduce yourself now? Wow. I know. Great question. Um, okay. I would say I'm Caitlin Bristow. You may know me from season 11 of The Bachelorette, season 19 of The Bachelor, but I have now gone on to be a podcast host of Off the Vine. Uh, and I live in Nashville, Tennessee, with my two rescue golden retrievers and my lovely boyfriend who also is from Bachelor Nation. And, uh, and uh, I don't know, am I supposed to just say what, like, that's how I describe it. No, it was perfect. We, we don't like to introduce people because sometimes I think that everyone changes and what people may think you are, you're not anymore. So we try to give people the space to kind of say what they are rather than us say who they are. That's cool, but it makes me feel like I'm like bragging, like I shouldn't go on. <laughs> No. Oh, go on. What else? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Because we know what you just did. You released like a number one hit song, which was amazing and insane at the same time because it came out of nowhere. I feel like. I really like did not see that one coming. I knew I obviously had the song. I'd been sitting on it for over a year and a half and I didn't ever think I was going to release it because I'm a pussy and I was like, I'm too scared to do this. And um, the lyrics, like, I didn't know if it made sense anymore to me. But then once quarantine hit, I was like, ah, people could probably relate to this. And um, so I just kind of talked to myself into it. And Jason, my boyfriend, was obviously so supportive. And he was like, you need to just do it. And so I did. And I thought, this is just going to be a fun little song that I show my followers. And, you know, nothing will really come of it. But it's fun to just have it out there. And then it went to, like, number one in Canada and number two on the charts in the States. And I was like, oh, so maybe I should do this again sometime. So do you get to go on, this is really superficial of me, but I have to <laughs> ask, because my whole life I've wanted to be a singer, like a, specifically a boy band. I don't know why, because they look like they have so much fun, just like, you know, and they can do no wrong. Yes, yes. Because women are always scrutinized, you know what I mean? But does this mean you get to go on a stage and like dance and, and, and sing? Um, like, I mean... Yeah, I guess eventually what once concerts are a thing again, maybe. I I don't know because I think that's what scares me because I'm like, thank you, Jason just brought me a coffee and that makes me so happy. Oh, you're a prince. Yes. Um, I Good. always no, I might have to poop. Um, do you mind shutting that door, please? Love you. <laughs> I love you. You sound like us. For a second, I thought she said I might have to poop. Like no, the after dog, my coffee. The dog, and then the I dog. realized it was the dog. <laughs> So you might have to poop. Would that scare you or excite you to go on stage and dance and sing? Both. Um, because, like, I think about going on stage for a live podcast, and I, like, love the energy of the crowd. I love being up there. I love the, like, intimate settings of just, like, these people who, like, obviously are there to see you so you know they love you. And I, I it excites me every time. So then if I think about – singing that makes me super nervous because i'm a very vulnerable person when it comes to singing because i know i'm not carrie underwood so i feel like i would be like am i worthy up here um but like dancing i would yeah i would get that 
Are oh. you, um, and they always said about Carrie, by the way, that she never danced. So, I mean, you've got one up on her. <laughs> there you go. Um, do, have you always been a singer? Um, I mean, I grew up in theater, so I did like song and dance my whole life. Um, I took voice lessons for probably like five years, but no, I wouldn't say like I'm a singer. It was definitely a passion. Dancing was like my number one. Um, singing was always a passion. And then when I moved to Nashville, I was like, oh, you moved to Nashville. And everybody's a singer songwriter here. So um, I, I honestly just found myself in a circle of songwriters and friends with country artists. And it kind of just happened naturally. And then I was still thinking of it as a hobby. I'm like, I still, this is just fun to me to do because I love singing. I take voice lessons every week now. And oh, wow. I have since I moved here. So I just love it. So um, um, I, what kind of dance did you take? Oh, I grew up doing everything. I mean, my mom was a professional ballerina. Oh. So she, yeah, she taught me when I was little. Um, I did jazz, tap, lyrical, ballet, hip hop. I took break dance. And I basically, I did it all. So you're a good dancer. Fair. That's not fair. I, I, you know, a lot of our audio. <laughs> that's, that's not fair. That's not fair. I'm, I'm jealous. My parents didn't buy. There was five of us and I got whatever the, the group sport was. And that's all we, but I, I, I wish one day I, we can go there, right? We can do that one day. I mean, I think I'm a pretty good singer. Some people don't think so, but. <laughs> well, if you think so. You just got to believe in yourself. Yeah. That's it. Our, our audience is mostly women. Mm -hmm. uh, they're mostly moms and, um, a lot of them, you know, it's interesting because a lot of them, the feedback is they feel like they're failing daily. They feel like they're not enough and they feel like, uh, they, um, it's like they're, they're struggling to find their way as people and then as women and then as moms. And I know you've been so open on your, on your Instagram account because outwardly you're like a very confident person or so it seems, mm -hmm. um, but I feel like you have found your way with your people. Is that fair to say? Like, sure. and we always wonder, like, is it an ongoing struggle for you? Do you think you're at a good place with the confidence? And is it something maybe your mom did to help like shape where you're at and let you be you? Yeah. I guess that's a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, what I, get, I get what you're saying. And I do think my mom, my mom was able to like, I was never told to be something else or, I was never told you have to follow this blueprint in life and you need to get your education and you need to do this. It was always, you're going to be successful if you're being yourself. And she kind of just allowed me to have that mentality and go off. And I was kind of like a, um, like I would just move away and go try this dance at school or I would move here and I would just do whatever. And I, I would never commit to even buying a couch because that was just too much of a commitment to me because I wanted to just be able to go wherever I needed to go. Um, so I think that helped because I was always told that I would succeed by just being who I am. Um, and so that definitely instilled some sort of confidence in me. But that being said, we're all human and I struggle so much with insecurities, whether, you know, what's funny is I actually was, you know, super insecure when I'm, I was living in Germany because I was dating this guy who was a hockey player and it was all about him. And it was his life and it was his career. And I was emotionally and financially relying on him. And I didn't have a passion anymore. And I was just so, um, I just felt like I was only his girlfriend. And that really had me lose myself. And that's when I got the most insecure. Um, I felt like I was just a shell of myself. I wasn't acting like myself. I didn't have any confidence after a few years of it. And I had to build myself back up after we broke up. Um, you know, going back to working at a restaurant when I thought I would never have to do that again and moving back in with my parents and finding like friends that would, you know, like I didn't really even have friends anymore except for my core, like few best friends and just, you know, building myself back up to have that confidence was also a process. And then I felt like I was in the best place personally, like that I'd ever been going into the bachelor and that show will break you down. Really? Because now you're opening up your life and your world and just who you are to, you know, America and Canada, or whatever. But like you've you've now got not just the people who love and support you around you to just tell you, you know, you're beautiful, you're successful, we love you. Mm -hmm. 
you've opened up your world to so much hate and trolls and um, people just judging you for who you are. And so I had to fight my way through those insecurities, but I felt like in that time I had the right tools that I had learned over the years to bounce back quicker, but I definitely went through so many insecurities and I do think I'm talking so much right now. I'm sorry. No, I mean, oh it's, God, oh, we're li- it's good. It's, okay. it's good. It's good. Yeah. Cause I just feel like it is, I, I always think of it like a house. There's always something to work on in the house. Always something broken that you need to fix. Always something that needs to look better, feel better. Like it's just an ongoing project. And I always like to think of myself that way. Like I'm just, I, I will forever have to work on my confidence and my insecurities and my self love. And that's just going to be something daily that I choose to do. Um, because I mean, I feel like I have everything I could ask for right now. Like I, I have so much that I'm grateful for yet. I still wake up some mornings feeling depressed and that's just like, it, you know, it could be even genetics. I don't know, but I still wake up. I have anxiety. I have insecurities and I do suffer with depression um, when I'm actually on my period. So um, do, you, do you think that that's something you've been like, I think a lot of moms, because often when you're a mom, you think of your children and how, what can we do to help them find that, you know, so much of Nat and I have two young girls and they're in the age now where, you know, they're 10 and 11 and they don't fit into size 16. Like they just don't fit into, they don't fit into kids clothes anymore. And they're not large. They're just normal. They're normal 10 year olds who happen to have a body. Uh, yeah. and they're developing yeah. and and so much of us is like how do we get there so we're not trying to fix their confidence but they're going into not caught but how do we get their identity mm-hmm. so good that it's it's okay for them to to have those things that happen where they're like i'm good and not whereas women we're not trying to fix women but yeah. we're trying to help our girls with what you're talking about with the skills yeah. you got yeah it's do they have social media or are they too young for that they have tiktok Okay. Yeah, my daughter has Instagram. Okay. So I would suggest like finding really empowering, um, like people to follow. Like I'm sure they follow, you know, raw beauty or you suggest it or you follow it. But I think it's like, there's so much, um, obviously negative things that come with, uh, online and social media, but there's a lot of positive things for it, um, with accounts to follow that are really empowering. And I think just about like setting them up for success with following the right accounts and having them read the right books or listen to the right podcasts and just surrounding them with, with people like that, that you, you know, the, the empowering people and people who want others to succeed. Um, right. I do think uh, internet can be a really good tool for education, even with that kind of thing. It's, it's hard to find because obviously there's a lot of stuff that could turn you the other way, but I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of it's it's hard to find when you can't control what they want to watch or what they want to ingest. You know what I mean? Like the top TikTokers are beautiful and very average, uh, be, be below average size in terms of what they look like, right? And it, yeah. it's hard to say you can't follow that because it's yeah. like that's what they want to follow. But I know it falls on us as like moms, and I, you know, when you say your mom let you be you, I think that's probably the biggest thing and everybody says your mom is so awesome why does everyone think she's so awesome she is a firecracker um she's just so fun and she has the biggest heart and she loves the drink and she just parties and like she's been a good time with like i don't know a person who has a bigger heart than my mom and she parties like she's just such a good human and so funny do you have brothers and sisters i have an older sister um, who is like literally her, my dad is like this very, um, he's very calm energy. He's very like positive and just always sees things. Um, sorry, the glass half full and like, he's, he's just this like humble man. And my sister's kind of the same way. And then my mom and myself were like in your face and like, so extra. Oh my gosh. And, um, do your parents live in Canada? So my, okay, so my parents are both remarried. So my mom and my stepdad live in, um, they have a place in Canada, but they also have a place in Mexico where they are right now. And Mm -hmm. then my dad and my stepmom and my sister and my niece and nephew, they all live in Leduc, Alberta, which is where I grew up. Very Uh good. Okay. And you did a live podcast. So you were on tour. You had these amazing nights. I wished 
wish that we could have come to one. Mm -hmm. And I hope one day we, we will. Did you have to cancel some dates due to yeah. COVID? I didn't. Yeah, I definitely pushed them back. There's, I'm still like hoping that maybe like something in the near future. So yeah, we, I was, I was so excited. I had um, booked a tour bus and I was like, yes, I'm going on tour. I'm going to like have so much, um, cause for my digital series, I was like, I'm going to have so much content of like road life. It's going to be hilarious. Like to be on a bus. Um, <laughs> yeah, we obviously had to cancel that. Have you, have you ever been on a, a done tour bus before? No, I mean, we did. You did? Yes. For two years. Yes. We had the full oh. tour bus. We've done 125 cities. Yeah, we took that. We had a whole crew. We had our DJ and we our were makeup to, artist. We were supposed to be at Foxwoods tonight. <laughs> bus life tonight. is so fun. It's so fun. Whoa. Wait, that, that's insane. I did not know that. Oh my yeah. gosh. You did a tour bus for two years? Yeah. yeah. And it's like a week at a time. We would go on the road for. That's so cool. Once we did, we did California and like Arizona for, I think, like 12 days. And. Wow. It was too, our children, it was too long. But we do not bring our families. Oh, no. Oh, it's, okay. it's, just, it's just our yeah. tour manager. It's just our crew. Yeah. And uh, no, yeah. And you drive in the net. You, you get on the bus. Like, and you got to make sure you're there on time. At whatever you, fun you want to have after. And then the bus drives all night long. And sometimes there's like rough roads and weather. She loves that. Sometimes it breaks. That? She, they, I like a bumpy ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, she did. She's a bit of that. It's really fun. Fired up talking about it. I know it's going to be so much fun. And in the back, there's a poom poom room. Oh yeah, it's where you have sex. No, it's where our luggage is stowed. No, it's it is where your luggage is stowed unless you are like a so a rock star. A lot of our road, a lot of our road, like a lot of our road crew does tours all year, like with people. And the shit that goes down on that bus. Lots of sex. Let me tell you something. Uh-huh. This is a confession of mine. I have told it on my podcast, but I think a couple of years ago, and I don't know if people remember it, but yeah. I've got a good tour bus confession. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but it, it didn't involve any sex, which is super boring, but it's still funny. Um, so this, I don't know if you've ever heard of this band, but maybe I shouldn't even name their name. They, I don't think they even make music anymore. Um, Avenged Sevenfold. Okay. I feel, are they Canadian? No. Okay. All right. American, but they're like, you know, they're pretty hardcore, like a screamy, like, like, I don't, I'm trying to think of people. They tour with like Rob Zombie. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so oh, we were friends with a guy who was a tour manager. This is like, I was 21. Okay. So 22 maybe. And right. I was dumb. And so we went, they, they came in and I served them at my, the restaurant I worked at and we, I got along with, with the band and they were awesome. And they were like, um, you should come to our show tonight. And I was like, okay, cool. So me and my girlfriend and I go, and we're like dressed in like heels and like a little tank top and like in this cute outfit and we're walking to go backstage and people are yelling at us like, it's not a Britney Spears concert. <laughs> Like, they like all got, you know, they all like looked like they were mad. And um, so we like to go backstage and hang out with them. And they're so nice. They're the nicest guys. And um, we stand on stage, like watching their whole show. And after we go and play cards on their bus and we were drinking scotch and watching um, Ron Burgundy. What's that? Um, Anchorman. Yeah. Uh, yes. And so we're playing cards, drinking scotch and like, scotch well that's just dangerous stuff next thing i know i woke up in a bunk with my girlfriend in a whole other city <gasps> and i i come out and i'm like and the guys are all like huh? <laughs> and i was like what happened and then i looked at my clock and i was supposed to be at work like half an hour ago and i'm in a whole other city with my girlfriend oh working in the same restaurant as me and we had to call in and like make up this lie and it was they but Caitlin, sometimes but we drive like, like eight or ten hours. How did you get like, home? Did you? Oh. Uh, it was from to Calgary, so probably about nine hours. Like I, the, I was probably so hammered off scotch, and the bus was already probably moving. And my, they were probably like, "You could come with us." And you're like, and, "Great idea! I love it." 
this is the best idea ever. And, and they didn't even put a move on us. Like they like made sure we were cozy in a bed. Like they flew us home after, like it was crazy. So they flew you home, but you only had the outfit that you were wearing. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we, and we ended up going to their next show in Calgary. So I had one outfit I was wearing. I didn't have like any, anything else, just what was on me and um, my purse. Oh, that is really good. I can't believe no sex happened. Yeah, nothing. It, but you know what? I can't tell you how these guys look like they're just animals and they are such gentlemen. It's crazy. That's a life lesson though. You know what I mean? It's kind <laughs> of a, a book by its cover. I mean, maybe if you're my daughter, maybe just judge a little bit of the book by its cover and maybe don't get in the car and drive for 12 hours. You know what I mean? Unless there's a tour bus, that's kind of fun. But that is yeah. so funny that you and your girlfriend both for yeah. at some moment thought that that was a good idea. Yep. Yeah, I, I have to it. tell you on this note, there's a post <laughs> you did that resonated with us so much because you were basically like, I like to have fun and I'm an adult and I'm still a grown up, but I, I will have fun always and call me mature, call me what you want. But like, this is who I am, something along those lines. And, you know, often, you know, we're, we're moms, obviously, to seven children, and we often get... Actually, we get we get a lot of fun, but I think sometimes people are like, oh, my God, you know, like, are you grow up kind of thing? And I'm like, why? Like, how how do how do you like stay your stay, how do you stay your course without listening to like all of the the noise that comes at you? Because I, I we know in the industry, a lot of people get impacted by comments mm -hmm. um, from their, their people. So yeah. How, how do you stay that course? I do get impacted for sure by comments by people, who, especially by the podcast listeners, because I'm like, I feel like we're all family where it like, like it hurts my feelings when they have some sort of criticism. Um, but I just try to remember that like, everybody's so different. Like, I might judge somebody for being super boring. I wouldn't say it out loud or go on their page and say it, but I might be like, oh, this is kind of boring. Like these people, <laughs> obviously, like people who are, you know, more reserved and quiet and that's just how they were raised. And I try and remember, like, we all have a reason why we are who we are today. And everybody's just so different that like I, no matter how hard I try, somebody will not like something about me. Like, so if I'm like, you know, what, I, I don't have an example right now, but like, I'm just an outgoing person. I like to drink. I like to just be honest. And I'm just like doing my own thing. Somebody's always going to have a complaint about that. Where even if I was, you know, like doing something, you know, talking about religion and I'm staying in and I don't drink, someone's going to have something to say about that too. Like no matter what you do, you won't please everybody. And I just try and remember that, that like if people are saying negative things to me about having fun like ew how how <laughs> i how know person you know like the only thing they can find to complain, like, grow up and it's like no this yeah i like that that doesn't impact you because honestly i don't think there's a lot of adults who have fun and i think no. i think that really be adulting is really terrible you know what i mean in a lot of ways like it's yeah. it's good but i think that when you have adults who have fun it is something that is um it, it's liberating in a way because so many people just, you know, it's like the people who you sit there and they're watching everyone have fun and they will like just are in a bad mood. And you're like, just fucking loosen up and have fun. Like, let it go. A it's, lot of, a lot of adults forget how they really a lot do. Of adults and they act like grownups. And the thing is, is we're all grownups, but I don't, I thought when I was going to be a grown up and a mom that I was going to act like what I thought those older people were going to yeah. act like, but yeah. I still act the same way that I acted before. Like, when are we ever going to feel grown up? Well, that's, that's the beauty of my mom. And I think why people love her is she's honestly, I think she's 66 now. I don't even remember. Cause she, she just seems like she's, she's just this spunky, fun, loving, like just loves to have a good time. And she always says like, I forget I'm this age. Cause I still feel this age. And it just doesn't matter what the number is. Or what you are. 
far as long as you're not committing a crime or doing like yeah, yeah. you know unforgivable things with being a degenerate as long as you're still being a responsible person like to some degree like you know you're, you're she's so hungover right now and smells so bad what do i it smell like, like alcohol oh like alcohol like it's, i, I have know that alcohol, alcohol smell that when you're hungover that's actually me i'm with you i still have my makeup on from last night she what'd you do last night I had to film. Um, when is this going to be airing? I think next, Sam. I think we'll tell us next Thursday. Um, you know what? Yeah, next. Th I believe next Thursday or the th Thursday. I one of the Thursdays soon, soonish. <laughs> okay. So my that's going to be good timing. So my um, season, they're airing five top five seasons of like, like Bachelor World. So they're doing Sean Lowe's season, um, mine, Ben Higgins. Jojo and I think Juan Pablo just to set up Claire to be the bachelorette. Um, I don't know if you watch the show or if you know oh, who those people are, but she oh. does. It's like I I like I look forward to Mondays because I'm like I have a date with my friends and I don't even like to watch it like later so I can uh, fast forward the commercial. Like I like to watch it live. Oh, I love this about you. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. the, um, all those seasons, but in three hour specials every Monday starting. Um, I think this Monday it'll be Sean Lowe. So next Monday, um, they're going to air my season in a three hour um, special. And I'm so like that. I like yeah. the, I like the, I like the last three episodes. So what were you uh, filming last night? So last night we had to film because um, so they were interviewing a couple other people throughout my season. And at the end they interview me. So Chris Harrison um, did like a Skype call. And we, I was obviously, anytime I'm going to do something with Bachelor World or like an interview, I'm like, oh gosh, what are they going to throw at me? Like Chris Harrison likes to stir shit up. Like what, what's he going to put on me? So I started to drink pretty early. <laughs> and uh, then after that, I, I can't say yet, but I, I was celebrating something. And so we opened champagne and this morning I'm like, I'm not okay. Do you get naughty when you drink? Stay the same? <laughs> like, what What are you when you drink? I just, I get, like, so happy and, like, want to dance and sing. And, like, uh, it depends what I drink, I guess. If I drink vodka, I will, like, roundhouse kick you in the face and, like, call you a bitch. Like, I get angry. You oh, get angry. Yes. I don't okay. drink vodka. I don't drink vodka. Okay. Um, um, if I do, her, her name's Katrina, and it's not my fault. It's hers. Yeah. Um, we have those too. Katriana. Yeah. See, everybody's got one, a, a evil sister. Um, gin makes me really happy. Tequila makes me very happy. Wine makes me just like a little sleepy, happy drunk, but um, ooh, champagne ooh, ooh. is a good time. I'm so excited to hear about what you're popping champagne about. I know. I'm excited to share it too. Uh, I want to talk tackle one more topic because you know we often say this, and then I'm going to let you go because I know we're all, you're hungover, she's hungover. Uh, <laughs> but I wish I I'm love. I'm super insecure and, you know, now that I smell like alcohol. And I'm this close to you. It's me, whatever. Oh, God. Uh, I gave her Alka Seltzer. We're all good. Um, <laughs> I want to say that you know your your current boyfriend like seems to accept you for you and mm. loves you just for the way you are. Doesn't want to change you. We happen to have husbands who yes. Like oh, we're so lucky. Right? I can like dance on the table in a bikini with a tutu on, and he's like, "That's my girl," you know. Yeah. Um, did you have to learn to find that? Did that take time to figure that out? And how how do we teach our daughters? Uh, to I guess you kind of have to know yourself. But what would your opinion be for finding that? That is for sure. I had to, um, you know, feel my own self worth in order to accept that kind of love because if I met him even five years ago I would have I just wouldn't I wasn't there yet for myself like I didn't think I deserved that I guess deep down but I I mean I was lucky enough to um I had and I think this is going to be great for your kids is that if, if you if your husbands are you know so accepting and loving and embracing who you are as a person that's what they're going to see growing up um even though my parents divorced I still feel like I saw healthy love and my dad was always just the most I mean just the most loving father I could have ever asked for that like you would think I'd have the opposite of dad issues like like I, I'm like I know I'm beautiful that's what that's what um, <laughs> that's what uh, this girl Becca Tobin said on my podcast she's like I have the opposite 
guys are like telling me I'm beautiful. I'm like, I know my dad told me all growing up. That's <laughs> <laughs> the same thing. She's like, I'm just so pretty. I, I mean, it blows I, my mind. Yeah, I, no, I need to lose a bit of weight, but I got a good face, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it's just about the, the love that they see growing up. Now, uh, did I have crappy boyfriends? Yeah. But like, I, I, I'm never, um, I'll never actually speak badly about any of my past boyfriends because they still were actually kind of great guys. Um, but I just didn't have the self love that I needed to have in order to accept the kind of love that Jason gives me until I had gone through certain relationships and learned about more about myself and what I need um, out of a partner and what I need from myself. Like I know I have to have passions in life and be doing something to feel whole. And I always like to say that, People are always like, oh, you need to find that last puzzle piece um, that's a guy that completes you. And I'm like, no, you are the puzzle. Find the frame. Like someone that's going to just show you off and, and feel proud of who you are and every part of you. And you have to be that full puzzle before you can find the frame. Yes, I love that. I was always a fan of him, and I was in, even more of a fan of him <laughs> when we went to, the, to, his, oh, to was- his house. And met his family. Wait. Oh wait, no, you went we, on like, TV. When we, we, when we got it. Yeah. Okay, got it. When, we, when I met when we when I met his family. First of all, his his house reminded me of like a house we would have in Toronto. And then his family. She's, they, she's very open about her love for men. Uh, her uh, for for men that she. Like, I it just I, I and when we when we went home with him, I was even more impressed. I was like, this is such a good guy. Yeah. Did you convince him to move to Nashville? I did. Yeah. He, um, okay. Also super excited. I can tell you this news, which is also a reason we were celebrating last night was I just wrote another song and it's all about Jason. And and it's about like how I thought when I met him and this is true, I thought he's going to be so good for somebody. Like he's just going to treat somebody like an absolute queen. And that I didn't even realize it was going to be me. Were you friend? Like you were friends first. So, well, I mean, in my mind, we were, he already was starting to have a crush on me, but I um, met him in Seattle for a podcast. No, no squeak toys right now. Uh, <laughs> I met him in Seattle for a podcast and, um, and he, yeah, we, I mean, we just, the chemistry was so undeniable, but I, wow, this guy make a great friend and he should be the bachelor. Like he's going to be, he should be the, the next bachelor. I thought so and, too. Yeah. And so I didn't realize, you know, still going through, I didn't like put him in that box of like, Oh, I could be interested. And, um, so I definitely friend zoned him for a while and just kept thinking like how lucky somebody was going to be to date him. And I was like, do I have feelings? And then it kind of just like started from there. But yeah. Do you think he would have done the bachelor if like it had come to him? Oh yeah. I mean, like, well, would he, would he have been the like he was like I've got feelings, but I, I guess if you were, not, you know what I mean, that would have been well, would have, yeah, plot twist. And and one more question about him is he's a lawyer? No, so he was um a banker. He was um yeah he was VP of a bank in Seattle. Yeah, uh, and mm-hmm. oh yeah, so moving to Nashville, right? I lost track. Um, so yeah, I I had convinced him to move here because when you come off the show, it's like a wild world of like you can create your own business, you can you know make money off you know, doing things on Instagram and whatever you want to do. Um, so he, I I was like I can't do long distance for like too long, but I don't want to move to Seattle. And he was kind of looking for a change of pace in his life, and he was like. He's one of the smartest people I've ever met in my whole life. And I didn't have any doubt that he would come here and find his own way. And that's exactly what he did. So he, he was willing to move here. I don't think he was too excited about it. He's a big city guy. He wants to be in like New York or like somewhere crazy. And Seattle was really boring for him. He liked the city, but he was like, I'm bored here. Um, And I like live out in the burbs in Nashville. Like I have rocking chairs on my front porch. Like I just love that life. And so he was like, oh boy. And now he loves it too. Nashville's so cute. We were supposed to be in that. We were supposed to do a show in Nashville in April. Oh, well, oh, COVID's a dick. Um, I need some more Doritos. Uh, uh, so what, what does he do now? Oh, there we go. Okay. So he's got his own, like, um, own businesses aside from um, Instagram and stuff. Like he does consulting and um, real estate stuff, but he also started a YouTube channel called restart where he um, talks about like, 
he breaks down complicated things going on in the world and like yeah. student debt and certain things going on with COVID or like politics. Like he breaks things down in a way where it just doesn't seem so overwhelming. I love that. He does these um, restart videos and talking about um, breaking the blueprint of like what you're supposed to be doing in life according to like education and this and it, um, and what you, sh what you want to do, what your passions are and moving forward in that. So, <laughs> We're going to link that. It's a, it's a, That's thing. So, I love when it's smart nice. people who like, honestly, they think, they think in a more complicated way, but they can tell people like us so that it makes sense. They're not better yeah. than that. They want to help people. You yeah. know what I mean? They're and not, they know how to speak other people's languages that aren't as smart as they are. That's, that's, yeah. that's Oh my God. Isn't that a good feeling? Oh, it's uh, the best feeling. So where can everyone find you? I feel like you have a million companies right now and a million things going on. And you are like, honestly, such a, a pleasure uh, to talk to okay. and we appreciate you taking time, especially hungover, both of you um, <laughs> and doing this, you know, uh, we just appreciate it. And where can everyone find you and tell us your everything, wine, like scrunchies wine. and accessories and a, a singer, it's singer, a songwriter. Just so you know. Just it's, a little, it's a lot. Like when I try and say it out, I'm like, hey, calm down, Caitlin. Take a <laughs> You're a triple threat, just so you know. Okay, so, but it's, I mean, it's all so fun. Um, so first of all, thank you so much for having me on your show. And you guys are hilarious. And um, I'm so glad we've come across each other in this wild we're world. Fun. We're more fun when we drink, just so you know. This was it. We can be even more fun. So that's just the beginning. But same these. Um, and then so I'll have my wine label and the new wine, the Spade and Sparrows 2.0 is coming out very soon. Where can they find it? So it's um, at Spade and Sparrows on Instagram. Um, the wine is so good, the new wine coming out. Um, and then I have my scrunchie line, which is going to be, I mean, it's going to turn into masks. And we're going to do a whole bunch of fun things now, too. So that's do edit, at do edit. Pino. And, uh, you know, sorry. that's we, appropriate. We've got dogs and kids and all. Don't worry. They never oh, apologize yeah. for noise. We never uh, let women apologize for what goes on in their lives, you know? Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, and then my Instagram and Twitter and everything is just Caitlin Bristow. But really, if you just go to CaitlinBristow.com, like everything's under there anyways. And my just go find her. And I can't wait to see what you come out with. Um, and keep kicking ass, please. Thank you. I appreciate you ladies so much. Let's get drunk one time. Yeah. Well, do us our rubber arm. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, yeah. Thank you for everything. And we will, we'll, we'll chat soon when okay. this so yeah, let me know when this comes out so I can tell we you. Will. We will. Thanks, Thank girl. You, we appreciate it. Bye. Bye.